Moving on. Next, I'm going to invite a guest on stage for a conversation. And of course, we'll be having the extremely enigmatic Anurag Batra with us. But who is this special guest? Let me give you some clues. He is definitely a real estate entrepreneur, but he's also a connoisseur of art. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the chairman of Ambuja Neotia Group, a recipient of YPO Legacy of Honor Award. He juggles many hats with equal elan. As chairman of Ambuja Neotia Group, he operates across the spectrum of real estate industry. He is a member of India Design Council, IDC, and Indira Gandhi National Center of Arts, New Delhi. He is the chairman of National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research, Kolkata. He heads the Gyana Pravaha, a center for cultural studies and research in Varanasi as its chairman, and also serves as the honorary consul of Israel in West Bengal. Please put your hands together as I welcome on stage none other than Mr. Harshvardhan Neotia, chairman Ambuja Neotia Group. And to my absolute honor, ladies and gentlemen, I have told a lot of achievements about him, but he really makes us proud to be a part of Bengal. He is Padma Shri Awardee. Please put your hands together once again for this enigmatic man. And in conversation with him, we have Dr. Anurag Batra, Editor-in-Chief and Chairman, Exchange for Media and Business World Media Group. To both of you. Good evening. It's my honor and privilege to talk to Padma Shri, Shri Harish Neotia ji. Uh, Mr. Neotia, let me start by asking, I am meeting you after four years. Uh, and I see you, you gained health, you lost weight. Uh, what else have you gained in the last two and a half, three years post COVID? Losing weight is gaining health. So what all have you gained? You're already a wise person, a wealthy person. You almost everything else. But what did you gain in the last 30, 36 months? It was a, it was a different period. It made us think. Well, uh, warm regards to everyone in this room. And thank you, Dr. Batra, for inviting me. I think um, one of the greatest um, learnings of COVID was a sense of gratitude. We all know what gratitude is, but when you face adversity of the kind that we did, both in terms of how your business will be and more importantly, how your life will be, and then you see those images on television of despair and, you know, we, we saw the mig migrant workers, we saw people pining for oxygen. Uh, you feel a tremendous sense of gratefulness to the Almighty that you could be able to have some support system financially, emotionally, we were together with our family. Uh, jokingly, I once said uh, that we have never had a hundred meals continuously on the same dining table in the same location ever in our life, which we did during COVID because we were stuck at home. Uh, the fact that the whole family was bonding in a unique way while you were going through this challenging period was a, was a great learning in um, gratitude. And that to me was, I think, what stayed with me. Absolutely, I think, uh, you know, I have to tell you a small story. I tell my children that I was born bald. Uh, at the age of 10 or 11, but between 10 and 12, I can't, I have an older sister. She's five years older to me. Her name is Sukirti and my name is Anurag. And my nickname is Anu. Yes, and her name is Bittu. So when we were younger, my mother would say to us that pray to God that your eyes are okay, your ears are okay, your limbs are okay. And I used to say to my older sister, that I would call her Bittu Didi, hey, Mama, kya bolti hai ki, thank God for just having your ears to be okay, eyes to be okay. Trust me, I every day thank God for things that I would normally not thank maybe 20 years back. 
but you're so right, the opportunity to be able to talk to you, the opportunity to work with fantastic colleagues like Tripti and Sapna, and I really mean it. I'm not, you know, I feel I'm very blessed, and I am, I'm grateful every day I wake up and I, I say thank you a lot of times, actually in the day for various things to God, and trust me, gratitude can change your luck. One, it will put you in better energy. When you, you can't have this, you can't be grateful and sad. You can't be. So if you're grateful, then you are grateful, which means you're not sad. Second is there's a power in expressing gratitude. Uh, gratitude makes life more abundant. And abundant doesn't mean more money, you know. Abundant means maybe better health, better relationships, also more money. Money does allow you sometimes to be able to choose what you want to do and what you don't want to do, right? You will deploy your time in the things that matter. So I think the fact that somebody like Mr. Neotia says that gratitude, gratitude you show in, the, in your actions when you help other people, uh, gratitude you show when you do whatever you do with 100% being in the moment. Now let me come to the business environment and then we'll come to the real estate environment. Uh, what has changed in the business environment of West Bengal in the last two, three years, which has made it a better place for, has it made it a better place for investment? I know you'll have to say that on stage, that I know. But tell me, what has changed about West Bengal and Calcutta that makes you hopeful about the future in terms of business? Because the reason I ask this is, West Bengal, Calcutta used to be this, seat of business. It used to be the center of business many, many decades back. And somewhere it lost its way. But in the last decade or so, I see it coming back slowly, slowly. You as a leading player in multiple sectors, investing in multiple sectors, interfacing with all stakeholders, what is your deep view of what's happening on the ground? Well, uh, this is going to be for most a biased answer because uh, you always love your home, the place that you were born in. For me, Calcutta is more than my workplace. It's also my birthplace. It's also a city that I identify with, a city that has given me everything. So naturally, my uh, response will be, in a, uh, for an outsider, maybe he may think that you know, you're being extremely biased. But having said that, I think anyone who comes into Calcutta after a few years will be able to notice that we are definitely having better infrastructure. We are soon going to have a very well integrated metro corridor, uh, almost 180 kilometers of metro railway, of which only about, not even 30, 15, 20% is operational today all of which is going to happen, most of it which is going to happen in the next two years. I think it will have a magical transformation to the infrastructure of the city. It will lift off about 25% of the traffic on the road above, and it will also make it eco-friendly. And uh, altogether, I feel that it will transform all, I think already traffic is pretty decent in the city and it will become even better. We are also seeing a lot of emphasis on greening of the city, improvement of parks and gardens. Uh, some of them people quarrel about this, um, the sense of aesthetics, but that's a very personal perception, but I think it's definitely, we have a cleaner city, a brighter city. I can say it's a cleaner city. Uh, and I can say the traffic is better. Uh, this is my 25th or 26th year of coming to Calcutta at two, three times a year. And uh, there are many other international events that are converging. So for instance, our recognition of the Durga Puja as a UNESCO World Heritage uh, cultural sort of um, event uh, is going to position Calcutta in a dramatic way in terms of international tourism. We recently got an international award for uh, cultural tourism in the state. and. There's a lot of far-flung areas that are getting developed because of better road connectivity. Road travel, which used to be a nightmare in most parts of India and certainly in parts of Bengal, is now increasingly becoming a pleasure. And I believe that uh, I haven't done that road route uh, personally, but my colleagues have done it. 
between Calcutta and Siliguri, which takes 12, 14 hours, will come down to eight hours. And this is going to be magical to, to the way people will move around the state. So all in all, I think infrastructurally we are improving. But I think the most important thing about Calcutta is the way its heart beats. And, you know, we often look at the hard infrastructure and get distracted by, uh, I, I don't think cities are only about the physical. I think the cities are about the soul, the imagination, the creativity, the empathy. I think in many senses, Calcutta is one of those cities where you are more important for what you do than if you hold an important post or if you have a lot of money. If you go to any gathering in Calcutta and the chances that a school principal or a painter or a writer will attract more attention than any minister or any extremely rich businessman. Uh, there is an irreverence in a sense to material achievement. Uh, in a sense, it is also a little problem because at times we give too little importance to it. But in another way, it's very endearing because I mean, life is not all about money alone. You said there's a non-challenge attitude, I heard. Yeah, it's, You're telling Tripti or Rail, they there's ask a, the There's a sort of non-challenge to it. You don't mind spending an hour discussing how a football match went last evening that has no consequence to your life or anything else. But the involvement of everybody in that discussion is phenomenal. Now, somebody may argue, and I think a lot of businessmen do, saying this is complete rubbish, waste of time, etc. No. But uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe because I've lived here, I've grown up here, I kind of find that very fascinating and interesting. And I think it adds a texture to human life which makes it so much richer and so much more vibrant and so much more endearing and so much more warmer, uh, all of which I feel is an important aspect of the soul of the city. Absolutely. And, uh, there is research after research that's shown that cities that have more art and culture also have higher real estate prices. By the way, in any city where there is a, there is more appreciation of art, I know you're a big uh, art aficionado, the real estate prices go up. You can Google it, the Harvard studies, the Stanford studies, there is empirical data, so it's not just somebody having a gut feel. But Dr. Batra, I want to, I want to pause here to say that it's irrelevant whether the price goes up or not. I think it adds texture and quality to life. Absolutely. I think that's important. Let's leave it at that because even if we find in uh, sort of everything that makes that quality better necessarily a commerce, it's not so. Why, why should everything ultimately... No, I, I, I'm just saying there is a... Possibility. There is a function and yes. a possibility. I, after COVID, we know. I mean, I'm not as big an art collector, but in my own way I am. I, I'm, I've heard about your car, but I have, I have collected art over the last 10, 15 years, and I do it because I, a lot of people say, oh, we want to buy it, it's not for selling, I, I, I like it, you know, I bought it for myself. Uh, and I have to, I was telling Boriam, I met him, and I was telling him he, I share my birthday with Sir Donald Bradman. I'm a quizzer, so I ask, anyone who asks me birthday, I tell them I share it with the world's greatest cricketer. This is Sachin Tendulkar, which he is, but it's his, humility that he says Sir Donald Bradman is. And Boria gave me a bag today, which is of Donald Bradman. I mean, he gave it to me for 10 minutes. I'm gonna steal it from his home one day, but I now know where he lives. But the fact is, I told him a story, Sir Martin Sorrell was coming to India, and I was the number one advertising marketing where, that's what I started with. And he gave us an opportunity to host him, so I did research, and he loves three things. He loves cricket, he loves art, and he loves mutton. So I, there was a Delhi Daredevils first year. So there were three large bats painted by big artists, a big, and about three of them. I said, one I'll give to Sir Martin Sorrell and two to other friends of mine who are also speaking there, big journalist and editor. But I got greedy. I didn't give the, I gave the one to Martin and I kept the rest two which are in my drawing room. So I, I do it because I like it. Music, art, books, there is no value to it. You do it because it gives you a, deeper sense of meaning. Now let me shift to real estate. 
you've been in, in this sector for a while. Uh, you have presence in almost all Pharmax, right? Now you have a large hotel also. What's happening in real estate? We heard from Sir what's happening. Every sector is, you know, whether you take uh, logistics and supply chain, you know, warehousing has become so uh, important and big and, you know, remunerable in so the returns are very healthy. The retailing is back with a boom. Office spaces are reinventing themselves. Co-working, residential, the offtakes are huge. Uh, luxury housing is growing. Um, industrial townships are coming. So every part of the real estate sector seems to be doing well. Uh, what, what is your take and what looks good from the surface? Uh, we need to be cautious about. Can you take us through this? Well, I fully agree with what Ravindra Bhaiya has just shared with all of us. And I think uh, he's spot on that we suddenly got a rebirth of sorts post-COVID because there is an opportunity, a window, which had pretty much got shut for some reason. Uh, that since we have a lot of talent here, that people started thinking about relocating their offices, which definitely has opened up new possibilities and likely that this will grow because any IT company that has worked in this city has always said that in terms of quality of output and low attrition, we are performing the best. Absolutely. And also the cost of space, etc., the cost of manpower. And the cost of talent itself. Yes. So I think uh, there is a great opportunity opening up there. Uh, so is with retail. I think we were scared uh, during COVID when a lot of retail moved online and there was a feeling that this might be a permanent shift, but that's not true anymore. People have gone back with a vengeance to the physical store. I think the experiential part of shopping, shopping is not just buying things that you need. Absolutely. It's also about experiencing, going with the family, enjoying an outing. I think to a great extent that is back and I think it will remain that way for some time, uh, for a long time, I think. On the residential front, I think the big uh, decision that happened with COVID was people realized the importance of a home and the size of a home. And uh, for the first time you said, okay, I need another room and my bedroom <laughs> cannot be just one where I have to stay the whole day with my wife. So this other room becomes very important because if I have to do online work or even if I have to have a conversation with a friend and I don't want someone breathing down my, uh, and listening to what I have to say, sometimes we just do idle talk, uh, we would like to have some space. And so does the children. So the, this whole concept of children sharing a room is now anathem. No, even a kid who's 10 years old says, I want a separate space because he also has friends and she wants to do something else. So I think the need for a larger space, that is one. Second, of course, is that because people who got locked in, I think they just feel that gated communities that provide large infrastructure uh, of sporting and you know health activities and uh, some amount of space to walk around, etc., has gained traction. So uh, larger projects have uh, a premium, I think. And then, of course, a major thing that happened was because there was a distress for a long time and as Mr. Chamaria mentioned, there was a whole series of events from demonetization onwards which had a debilitating sort of impact on real estate. Uh, COVID being the last straw virtually, proverbially, on the, on the camel's back. So I think they all caused a lot of... Um, developers, particularly smaller ones, to kind of exit this space. And therefore, the more established players uh, were able to consolidate and were able to gain market share. Also, the buyers became more conscious and 